Okay, so we got um, new developer notes. Uh, it looks like I mean I didn't see I haven't seen what the what the things are, but like who's getting patched necessarily? I know Araminta and Saramintha and a few. I think Destina. I'm not sure, but I, I I mean obviously I didn't watch the patch notes. I, I saw on YouTube like Mango had uploaded a video, and I thought I thought it was an April Fool's joke because both Araminta and Saramintha were on there, and I was like. Well, obviously, this must be an April Fool's thing because I don't think that's actually going to happen. But then I started seeing more people upload uh, their little, like, reactions to it. I was like, oh, I guess this is a thing. It actually took me forever to find this. I don't know why it took so long uh, to find this page with the with the buffs and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's why I was like, well, maybe this is an April Fool's joke. Maybe they're all just in on it, but I guess not. So we'll see. Uh, whether or not this is an April Fool's from Epic 7 themselves is still yet to be determined. Um I think they did this last time, and I think it was equally as not, like, I don't think it was a joke last time either. Um, I think while they do celebrate April Fool's to some extent, they're not just going to release some false information like that. But I don't know, who knows, we'll see. Um, but yeah, actually, it's kind of weird because I don't have the game open. Um, let me see if I can find some music or something. Um... Hopefully this isn't like the music doesn't come out too loud. But okay, we'll do that. It's actually kind of loud for me. Hold on, let me see if I can. This is like the least professional thing I've ever seen. Okay, so we're back here now. Um, yeah, let's take a look at who's getting buffed. I guess first of all, it looks like a pretty decent list. Um, there's a lot of five stars compared to like normal. I feel. I feel like it's like 50-50, but like here we've got quite a bit. So Moonlight 5-star, Silverblade, Araminta. I'm always happy to see that. Um, obviously, I like Silverblade, but she doesn't, she doesn't have a lot of use. So, you know, we'll see where she goes now. One of the things with, with Silverblade is that like she's really strong if she's strong. Like if she gets buffed too much, it's like, damn, she's going to like, she can stomp on people. Um, but she's like one of my favorite characters. So hopefully she'll be usable. Um Again, I'm going to have a hard time using her just because I don't have like a stripping team. I don't have like a debuff heavy team, which you kind of have to run. Um, but that's oh, what it is. Dark Corvus, obviously Dark Corvus has been, he's not bad, but he, he's kind of like, again, it goes back to the same thing. He's, he's an auto win for certain things, but like, he's also very boring. He doesn't really do anything. Um, even, even his like, quote unquote, auto win status on certain things is being kind of jeopardized because like. Okay, he hits someone for like 20,000 damage, basically almost true damage, right, with his S3, but like, Ramiro does the same thing, I mean, obviously not that much, but he does like 5k to, you know, I don't know, 6k on his S3, plus the 10k flat damage is like, okay, and then he does that more often, as well as defense breaking, buff stealing, S2 does damage, like, it's just not really worth it, right, so, Dark Horus is in a bit of trouble, we'll see what they do with him, um, DN, see, I thought DN was going to have, like, because that uh, April Fool's, like, side story thing with the, it said specialty change, and I was like, oh, that's pretty, that'd be pretty cool to see her, but I guess not, I, that was just a joke, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so Araminta, obviously, she's been struggling for forever, there's no need to um, re-elaborate on that. Uh, Ludwig is interesting, just because, again, he's, like, he's never been really good, there's people who try to push him for some reason, so you got people like, um, uh, I think y, YDCB, whatever his name is, um, tries to show people that he's overpowered or whatever, but that's just because he has good gear, right? Like, he's not really that good on his own. And that gear, he like, he'll just move it to someone else anyway. Um, but anyway, uh, Testina. Uh, interesting that Testina's getting a buff because she's kind of like, she's kind of decent, but she also gets kind of overshadowed by like, um, what's the other one? Uh, Akades, Akades kind of does what she does a little bit better, not uh, 100% like, she doesn't like do the exact same thing, but like, I'd rather take Akades into something than I take, before I take Destina, um, so that's kind of interesting to see that, um, Ludwig, I've got like five or six copies of Ludwig, but I'm probably just going to hold on to him until ML Ludwig comes out, whatever that is, um, even if he gets, even if, even if he gets good, I'm still probably not going to do anything with him, because I don't really care. Uh, Guider Aether, um, I don't think anybody cares about Guider Aether's viability just because we fodder him off for uh, Silver Transmits, so unless they decide to, like, nerf that or get rid of that, then, you know, we'll think about it, but, yeah. Uh, if he turns out to be good, I guess that's pretty cool. Um, 
I have one triple S Guider Ither just sitting there. Be, like every other Guider Ither I get, I, I fodder it off for the transmits, but I have one just in case he gets buffed to the point where it's like you kind of need this unit. But that being said, I don't think he's going to get buffed to that point here or probably any time in the future. I just, I'm just i just very paranoid about that kind of stuff. So uh, take that as you will. Coley is getting buffed, which, I mean, okay. Uh, Armin is getting buffed, which is pretty cool, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some of these buffs are like, who cares? Uh, so we'll start with uh, the main one here. Uh, so her S2 looks like it's taking a lot of changes here. So flame friction. Is, wait, is this the S2? Yeah, 75 chance to burn before, after, where's the uh, meteor fall? Meteor fall, awakened, okay. I think. Oh, flame friction. Okay, okay, never mind, I'm, I'm dumb. Uh, so flame friction is the S1, so it's just the burn. Okay, so this, the burn is the same. After attacking when the enemy is burned, activates flame release. Okay, so this, all this is just being attached to the S1. 60% <clears throat> chance to burn. Uh, okay, so yeah, all this is being thrown on the S1. Okay, so the S2 is going to become something different. Let's take a look at what the S2 is. When an ally, except for the caster, uses an attack that targets all enemies, increases combat readiness of the caster by 20%. Um, And she gets, what, 25%? I mean, it's only a buff. Because now she gets another m more whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's only a buff. They basically just took... I feel like if you're going to take um, Caesarea's, like, S2 thing, just give her the attack bonus as well, right? Give her more attack or something. I mean, I like... Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, at least even with even with um, Caesarea, she, like, boosts everybody up. Here she just boosts herself up. Um, yeah, this, this S2 went from being, like, look at all this stuff. It actually, like, extra stuff it does to after the, the proc to, okay, now she just gets a 20%. Like, it just feels like Luster now. It's like, obviously, again, it's only a buff because we didn't lose all this. It just got moved up here. Um, so it's only a buff. It's just, <laughs> now the S2 looks really lame. Like, oh, what's your S2 do? I just moved me forward when, when I get AO AOE. But that's fine, I guess. Um, I don't think this is, this is going to change anything, right? This is not going to, like, if this is all the changes they did, I mean, nothing's going to happen. It's the same. Um, let's take a look down here. Drops a giant meteor, uh, making them unhealable for two turns. Okay, so we got with a 50% chance to burn. Uh, let's look at the other one, the awakened one. 50% chance, unhealable. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, and stun. Oh, the stun is the awakening bonus. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Um, so we're, we're losing the unhealable, I guess? Yeah, we're losing the unhealable and we're getting a higher percent chance to burn. And she drops somebody's combat readiness by 30%. Yeah, this... I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Um, this isn't going to do anything to her. Like, her biggest problem is, like, immunity and cleansing, cleansing. And even now, it's, like, even worse. Like, there's so many cleansers and so much immunity running around that who cares. Um, I... What I'm probably going to end up doing is try to find some way to run her on counter set. Like, basically the same way you build an ML... Um, the same way you build ML... What's her name? ML Mercedes, the the five star Archdemon Shadow. Is that when you build her? I'm thinking about trying to build her because she has the same sort of like 25% combat readiness increase, the AOE, the, the S1 into the AOE, like the the nuke and all this stuff. So I mean it's fine, but I don't know. I just these buffs aren't really doing anything. I don't think. Um, but I guess we'll see. That that was kind of a waste of my time. But let's see. Absorb some of the HP. This is a shield bash. This is the S1. Uh, and this is the S3, the Soul Burn increases damage, so I guess we got more damage The Soul Burn, what was the Soul Burn? Yeah, I think the Soul Burn was always more damage or something, I don't remember Yeah, yeah, it was always more damage um, Damage dealt And amount recovered is based on the proportional to the Heron's max health um, Oh, that's interesting. So this S1 used to, like, depending on how much damage, now he just gets a flat, like, based on how much HP he has, he gets a flat return. That's kind of interesting, just because the S1's uh, healing wasn't really, nobody cared. It was S3's healing that just topped him off, usually, but, okay. Um, yeah, damage don't increase proportion of the target caster's max health. Uh, now the healing is, okay, what, who cares? 
Um, attacks with lethal hit absorb some of the damage as health when enemy is defeated and inflicts extinction. That's actually pretty good. Um, it basically doesn't do a whole lot more to him other than what he was already doing which is just nuking everybody one at a time slowly it's just that now if you're fighting against like um like uh made chloe like she can't just keep reviving everybody right like you don't have to time it or anything like that but i mean it's fine right again these two like the two moonlights that they chose to buff aren't just gonna like magically show up in the meta again so it, it is what it is um the only thing, again, the only thing this is going to change is, like, now, like, before she kind of had a, like, you had to run somebody in between her and the stripper with Araminta, right? With Silverblade Araminta. Now, because she gives herself 20% CR push, you don't have to run her and someone else to boost her up, right? The stripper goes, and then she'll boost herself up, and then the next person that's coming is straight up just that, um, that stunner. Which, again, eh, it's fine. I mean, you know, it's like, whatever. But yeah, I was just thinking about like how the combination works. But yeah, so it basically just kind of fixes that. Um, that aside, is still not really worth anything. Uh, DN is the first one we're looking at here. DN doesn't have a whole lot of stuff to do. Ah, oh, this is exactly what I had. Oh, I should have said something. But again, it's one. I'm not gonna make a whole video to say this one thing. But I was thinking uh, the one way to fix DN is just to give her two debuff dispel on the S2, and she'll be solid. Um, is she gonna be great for this meta? Not necessarily, but I mean, definitely she's gonna be a lot better. Um, yeah, so I like this change. Um, it's only a good change. Uh, I don't use Deanna in anything anymore. Um, some people still use her. She's just kind of irritating. Um, she's irritating against me because I don't have any strippers, but she doesn't come out that often because everyone and their mother is using strippers these days. So take that for how you want to. Uh, text, this is Ignite. Soul Burn used to ignore effects resistance, which is a waste of everyone's time, but there we go. Uh, so this basically does the same thing. 50% chance to burn, which nobody cares. Whatever, right? Wait, is this... Yeah. There we go. This is exactly what I had said a long, long time ago. Like, I mentioned this. I said, Car Researcher Carrot is a three-star burn popper or burn detonator. We need a five-star version of that. And Araminta was in the prime position to just be that, but it took us this long to finally get it. So at the end of the turn, detonates burn effects inflicted on the enemy. She might, I don't think she's going to be better than Researcher Carrot necessarily. We'll look at the rest of her kit, but I don't think she's, ne she's going to be necessarily better. However, because she can inflict a burn and pop it in the same skill, that's way more interesting. That's like way stronger. Um, yeah, I think that's like, that's a considerable improvement. Not to mention now it's got a, uh, what, 15, 65% chance to burn. Yeah, I think that's going to be way better. I, that's just like 100%, like just infinitely better. Um, usage there uh, again so the s1 is what decreased the cooldown of this thing so we'll, we'll take a look at how this works um so this is this that, so that's already i'm already kind of excited not to like use her necessarily but like she looks like a lot of fun attacks all enemies with a catalytic explosion dispelling two buffs making them unhealable for two turns then increasing attack of all allies for two turns. This, is, this is already pretty good the two buff dispel is ridiculous we're like this buff is like again i don't think she's gonna be broken or anything but like she's already way more usable than she used to be uh, for each unhealable inflicted, increases combat readiness of the caster by 25%. That's kind of interesting. This, so yeah, so they put they put this up to four turns, which is interesting. But anyway, this is pretty good because this is your opener now. Um, and then she, if you have enough effectiveness, which you should have enough effectiveness, because I think most of us are just going to move our a lot of our gear from, again, I haven't even seen the S3, but most people are going to probably try moving their gear from, uh, what's her name? I'm already drawing a blank here. Uh, Researcher Carrot to her. Um, so that she can uh, like you know, do the strip stuff. And then now she pops burns and stuff. And she's a five star. She's got five star stats and all that. I think, you know, like I said, I think she's going to end up hitting most people with this unhealable thing. So, you know, that's four. If she hits all four, she takes another turn. So this is basically giving her another turn. If not, uh, she'll move up a decent amount anyway, right? It's still pretty good. No, so I, I like this. Uh, this is this is actually she looks like a lot of fun now. Like not not just like good, but like fun. Um, let's see. So what happened to her soul burn? Because the soul burn ignores effect resistance, and the soul burn is is missing now. Is this the soul burn? Right. 
Because if this is the soul burn, then that sucks. That's kind of boring. But it shouldn't be. I don't know. I don't know where the soul burn went. It disappeared. Attacks all enemies with a massive fire pillar, blah, blah, blah. Inflict 100% chance to burn for two turns. Now she has two burns for 100% chance. Wow, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. 100% chance for two burns. 50% chance for a stun. Grants barrier to the caster for two turns. Barrier. There we go. This is perfect right here. This is it. It's over. Um, she basically, yeah, she's basically just better researcher carrot, which I think is going to be insanely hilarious to watch her do <laughs> what she does. Um, do I think she's going to be as broken as researcher carrot was when she came out? No, because when researcher carrot was around, we didn't have as much like cleansing ability. We had a decent amount, but like it was annoying, like having to deal with her, because uh, like no one had it like all prep prepared and, and worried about. Um, because researcher came out as a precursor as well as all the debuffers we've been dealing with more and more lately, and all the, you know, debuff resistance and all that stuff we're dealing with. Um, she's not going to be as strong, but she's definitely, like, I just feel like, the, like, the fact that we see Researcher Carrot fall off, I think she's just going to, like, if anybody still wants to use her, we can just use her instead. Um, am I saying you should use her? I mean, you know, you could probably stick with Researcher Carrot just because um, she has that one clen that one buff cleanse, a debuff cleanse on her, on her S2. Um, and the burn from like you touching her, right? So it makes it harder to hit her because you don't want to hit her because she'll burn you. Um, but I think she's going to be a lot more proactive. Like she's, you want her a little fat. You're going to want her a little faster than Researcher Carrot was, um, and just be really irritating. Um, yeah, th this looks like way more fun. Um, you get to dispel two, so then you take your turn again, and then she does this, which two burns, and then you've got. Um, stuns and whatnot and barrier and all that stuff so it looks like a lot of fun um yeah i'm probably gonna start using her i'm just gonna switch off all my researcher carrot gear because i don't use researcher carrot anymore um and i'm probably just gonna switch on to her all right so let's see what ludwig does uh before so well this is the awakened one so right here attacks enemy with light 50 percent chance to stun for one turn before granting caster invincibility decreasing buff durations by one turn with 100 percent chance to stun that's pretty interesting, um, I guess. That's pretty cool because you're, you're dropping immunity at this point. Uh, invincibility after an attack when the target is stunned increases combat. Okay, so then you get 50%. Okay. So, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, I think uh, this is going to be insanely useful. Um, yeah. You get rid of, uh, well, one turn immunities um, and then ignores effect resistance, right? Um, yeah, I think that's good. That's great. Attacks all enemies with nocturne magic, uh, penetrating defense by 20. When an enemy is defeated, extends the caster's buff durations by one turn. So basically, you do this, get invincibility, do this, um, extend it by one turn. Penetrates defense by 30 when caster is invincible, penetrates defense by additional. So it goes up to 45. The caster barrier for two turns. So you don't need the barrier. Yeah, this is this was dumb. Wait, well, that was over here somewhere. Okay, never mind. This is fine, I guess, whatever it was before. But now it's like you just get extra immunity, so you don't have to worry about the shield. The shield was dumb. Um, but yeah, this is pretty good. Um, I like it. Uh, he's just like, the problem is he's just like a raw damage mage, and like, he's not going to have as much survivability. Because he has to go fast and hit somebody. Eh. Um, but yeah, this is pretty great. Um, more pen on both of these, which is good. He has AoE, so I'm probably not going to run like a pen set or something, but you know, still. Uh, so let's take a look at the S3 here. I think this is the S3. Attacks, yeah, S3. Attacks all enemies with Nocturne magic when the enemy's defeated. Extends... Okay, that's this. Never mind. Okay, so there you go. It's this one up here. Um, so I wonder if they took the... I don't think they took the Soul Burn damage and then just put it in here. I, that's fairly certain that's not what's going on. But, um, you know, for anyone who uses Ludwig, uh, you're going to have a lot better time with him. He's going to be kind of like, not necessarily a bruiser mage, but he's going to be a little more bruisery just because he can like, if he can take one hit, he can activate this ability, which is, I think is S2. Um, and then he's invincible. So he gets another turn later uh, and then he can activate this. So that's, that's most of his kit. He just dumps, right? Um, and all he has to do is kill one enemy, which is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I think that's fine. Um, again, it's going to be hard to get a lot of damage with, with how like fast you want him. And then we get more exclusive equipment stuff here. So, 50% when using Moonlight Blow. Damage dealt increases by 10%. Okay, and then you probably, I mean, you might want that one just because you probably want to guarantee the kill on this. Um, and then just, it's the AoE attack, so you want to spread more damage around anyway. 
this one, this this over here, this here was always dumb to me. Healing uh, attacks the, the staff heals the lowest lowest health. Healing increases proportional to the targets to max health. This is always dumb to me. Uh, it should have always been this, but I'm not sure why it wasn't before. Uh, regen before is there the which, this is the awakened one. Okay, okay, uh, blessing to an ally, recovering their health and increasing their combat readiness. Oh wait a minute, the S2 didn't. Wow, I didn't realize that the S2 did not dispel debuffs. I thought it dispelled debuffs. Um, interesting. So we got nerfed. So we got the two debuffs, but we got nerfed on CR, which isn't too bad. Um, it's a bit better. You acquire two souls before. Okay, and then we got the two turns. So I think this is yeah. This is this is this is a, this is a better um, situation here. I gladly give up to 20% on the CR push uh, for these two debuffs, as well as um, being able to do this more often. Um, the Cena used to just like S3, S2, and then she like for a bunch of turns she just S1. Now it lets her S3, S2, S1, S2, and I think her S3 could be up. Uh, I think it's like no, nah, I think it's too long. But anyway, the point being this this being up more often is a lot better. Um, so I think that's good. Uh, when an ally uh, grants all blah blah blessing, I don't know what's going on here. Oof, so she got revive all dead allies to 20% health. Yeah. For allies that are not dead, dispels all debuffs at the... Hold on, so... Yeah, this is already kind of crazy. She just has... We have another reviver. This is this is, this is is even crazier because now she's basically... Uh, what's her name? Not a maid Chloe necessarily, mind you all, but... Um, she, she, we have an AOE revive available to like regular people, right? You don't have to pull a moonlight to get an AOE revive the same way Maid Chloe does. So that simultaneously reduces Maid Chloe's like usefulness as well as just increases everyone's overall like utility, which I think is good. Um, like I said, do I? I think she, I think she's probably gonna be seen just because of this line. Everything else they've done to her, I don't really care about what all this other stuff is. But just just this AOE revive already makes her like probably the biggest winner out of this whole patch like yeah so i don't know no, that's pretty cool uh at the start of battle at the start of the first battle grants spirit's blessing to the caster for two turns Ooh, what's this do Ooh, that's pretty interesting uh that's pretty cool she gets a 60 percent f res at the beginning um which means that you can kind of ease up on her effect resistance and just run more speed but the problem is like destina is very slow like that's the biggest problem with Destina is how slow she is. I think what would have been better is if this, like if this CR push didn't just affect the person she's pushing. Let's say, like even if, okay, so like let's say it was 30. She gave 30 to the person using it every two turns is pretty good, right? And she would help her, uh, plug up her speed problems. But the other part is like even if like let's say she gave out 30 and then it said uh, Destina gains 50% of the CR push. That'd be pretty cool too, right? So she gets 15%. Um, but yeah, I think that's fine. I think all this stuff is is pretty decent. Uh, just, like I said, this line right here basically made her like the best unit here. Is she going to be overpowered or anything? No, obviously she's still probably weaker than Maid Chloe. Uh, however, just the availability of having Destina, like a, an RGB five star AOE team reviver, uh, is a pretty good thing. As well as like all the cleansing she does, right? Um, and then again, this 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 is just like a bonus, right? Sixty percent effect resistance. Like thanks. Uh, so this is all pretty good. Um, I actually, I like her a lot. I actually like Araminta more than Silverblade Araminta, but, uh, just because Araminta, they kind of solved some of her, sorry about that. They actually solved some of her problems in the kit and what we saw, and they actually just made her a good unit. Silverblade, they didn't really fix any of her problems. Like, they just gave her more stuff. Like, she's she has the exact same kit, and then they just added in a uh, uh, 20% CR boost. Gave her a little bit more uh, burn chance, and one guy gets his decrease, his uh, comet readiness decrease. But like, who cares? Because he's gonna be stunned. Okay. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm gonna just leave that for now. But like I said, she's not like they didn't really do anything to help Silverblade. They just kind of made her do what she was already doing uh, more. Now, you know, the same problems still persist though. Uh, decrease school skill cooldown to Steen's Grace by one one turn. Increases comet readiness of the caster vision. Okay, so they they took away that uh, and they made it so that uh, that that twenty percent we lost on the S two is coming back. So okay, 
Um, let's go down here. So Guider, Aether, Caster grants a barrier for two turns. Recovering health of all allies grant and granting a barrier for two turns. Oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, so presumably this health and barrier goes to everyone, which is pretty crazy. Um, Spirit Protection, Wave of Force, uh, S3 here. Heals all, so the healing got taken from this and got put up here into this one. Um, dispels all buffs before increasing attack of the ally. This is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, there's not a whole, else, a whole lot else to say. Um, he's, an, he's a light hero, so, you know, he has element neutrality on his, like, buff strip, but buff strip without buff block isn't really that useful. But yeah, I think it's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, I don't think this is going to make anybody use him anymore than he already is being used, but... I mean, certainly not a downgrade. It doesn't, like, annoy me or anything. Barrier to all allies. Barrier strength. Okay. Increases amount recovered by 20%. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's talk about Kali here. Activating ambush again. Ambush. Accurate strike. Baptism of fire. This is the bombs. Oof, this is a lot of changes it looks like here. Ambushes the enemy, has 75% chance to steal one buff. Uh, okay, so that's pretty interesting. They're giving her, like, buff stealing. Um, Ramiru, obviously, was one of the first people we see with this. Um, increases effect chance 100% to steal two buffs. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's not the worst. Um, it's just, again, Ramiru, like, she's... Instead of, like... Oh, yeah, I don't know. It's just the S1. We'll, we'll move on. Like, whatever. Uh, attacks the enemy with an unseen blade and grants the combat the grants stealth to the cast for two turns. At the end of the turn, detonates any bleeding effects and bombs. Okay, so she's another detonator, which is pretty interesting. Um, because of Cyseria and um, Pirate Flan, um, bombs are getting out there a lot more, and having another detonator is pretty interesting. I don't know if we're going to see her in conjunction a lot, but um, I mean, I guess she's fine. Uh, let's see, attacks animal, decreasing buff duration by one turn, so you can ask three, inflicting bleeding and planting a bomb. So basically, yeah. If she can find some way to go, yeah, then she gets 50% CR. So if you get this, if you, like, find some way to make her go fast enough, she can just loop around and then S3 into S2 and then pop them and then they're, you know, damaged. Or since she's an assassin, you run around like RNL or something, right? Uh, RNL triggers and then you just immediately go after and then just bomb them or something like that so that's pretty interesting um when the target is a fire elemental hero ignores effect resistance and increases common readiness okay so against fire units this is actually even better right against fire units you're straight up just gonna bomb them um i think that's pretty cool uh i think she's gonna be a lot more fun than i guess originally uh anticipated and they give her more attack to scale with the bomb so basically you don't have to run a crit chance on her at all you're just running you just want speed and uh, effectiveness and some attack and that's basically it um, so that's kind of interesting uh, yeah 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 so basically she's yeah she's actually pretty good now um, turn one you're gonna hopefully right uh, plant the bomb and the bleed on one person hopefully it's a fire hero if we bring her in for that elemental advantage she goes she hurt you know 100% she goes again she activates the S2, uh, pops the bleed and the bomb, and then she goes into stealth, which gives her some survivability. Eh, I mean, uh, is everyone going to invest into her because of that? Probably not when Assassin Coley just does this, but better, because she just murders people. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, Assassin Coley still overshadows her, which means that most people are just going to dump their Coleys into her, so I mean, it is what it is. Oh, funnily enough, I just realized we're not getting any artifacts, which I feel like there's a whole bunch of artifacts we could be getting, but whatever. Text of the Shield, um, but yeah, I think Kali, we're not going to see her probably much more. I think we're going to see her just because she's fun, and just because we have a lot more bombs out there, and like, have her um, interact with them in some way, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Text of the Shield, 35% uh, chance to stun, yeah, CS1. Yeah, the S1. So Armin, that's kind of interesting that we're getting Armin buffs, so I'm not really sure why. When the ar an enemy is debuffed, the chance will increase. So, okay. Damage dealt proportional to defense. When it's not the caster's turn, this attack changes into an attack. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Ooh, that's very interesting because... Oh, she... Wow, this is this is really weird. Um, This means that you should probably... I'm probably going to try Armin out just because of this buff. I don't really care what any of this other stuff is, but... 
Is this Moonlight Armin? No, this is yeah, this is regular Armin. Armin has. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Wow! Look at all the stuff that they just did to her. Okay, so even ignoring all this, just looking at this, this looks like a lot of fun because I can run her on counter set with an Albris, and she has an AOE thirty thirty five percent chance to stun, which, to some degree, uh, is all right. It kind of reminds me of uh, what's his name. You guys know what his name is. Um, Pergus, the, just the green Pergus, because there's that AoE slam attack, which is has a stun chance. This is kind of interesting. Um, like I said, it's kind of encroaching on his his skills, so I'm not sure what's up with this, but uh, having the um, having the, the advantage of running uh, Elbrus is pretty interesting. Uh, one attack has a 15% chance to counterattack. There you go, 15% chance was 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, so 20% chance. When an ally except the caster is attacked by a single attack, decreases damage suffered by 20% when one or more damage reduction... Oh my gosh. This right here is ridiculous. So basic... Wow. Wow. I think we're going to see... I mean, again, along with Destina probably being used more... Is Destina broken now? No, but I think she's going to be used more. Um, along with Destina, I think we're going to see a lot of Armin because... She's got 20% counter chance. You build her with a counter set. Now she's got 50% counter chance. Am I saying you should run Elbrus on her? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Just because she's got so much AOE or so much counter attack chance on herself. Um, I'm not sure what else you would run, but, you know, Elbrus is a pretty good one. So, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty decent. Uh, but anyway, the point being that she has, you know, can you run counter set? Yes. Would I recommend it? Probably not. Just leave her on her with her own counter. Run the other thing and figure out another set to run on her, or just something. But counter is just as good. Um, yeah, and then not only that, like she has twenty percent damage reduction on uh, single attacks, which is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I think this is pretty interesting. I think she's gonna be a lot of fun. No, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna build her. Protect. Oh wait a minute. Ooh, awakened. Oh, awakened gives you ten percent more, so she has thirty percent. Oh my gosh, so thirty percent. You don't even need to run a counter set. I I mean probably. She looks like a discount Belion now because you can run the injury set that Belion runs on her. Granted, it's not going to be as effective because half of Belion's annoyance is one, no souls. Well, I guess it's not half. It's like a third. One is no souls. Two is constant AOE. And three is constant injury application. Now, a lot of people will tell you injury doesn't mean anything. It's just whatever. Nobody cares. And to some degree, it usually doesn't matter. But when Belion counters like three times like within one turn cycle... Most of your units are basically down to half HP, which basically means they're all basically one shot a bull from like any good decent unit, right? Um, so that's important to realize. But like I said, Belion's really the only one that uses that set to any degree of like usefulness because of how often she can counterattack. But like I said, with this, she's now basically like a discount Belion, the same way um, Destina is like a discount um, Maid Chloe. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, we'll see how she turns out. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth running her with the Elbrus. It probably you're probably just gonna have to. But I was just thinking like, run her with her skills and then give her like again the um, like an Aureus or something. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, then this S three dispels one buff, which is pretty good from all allies. Defense to the caster for two turns. And barrier. Uh, that's pretty good, because she, now she gives herself defense buff, right? And now she does more damage on this. Again, I don't know if you're going to build her for damage, but I think she's going to you know, she's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, so I think, you know, the two... Unexpectedly, actually, Armin is one of the more fun winners out of this. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, barrier strength is increased from before. This is The cooldowns return is reduced by one, which is pretty crazy. And there you go. Soulburn gives her one extra turn on the defense barrier, on the defense thing. And I forgot that she also has an exclusive equipment, which... Uh, chance of stunning, nobody cares. Uh, increases Protect's chance to counterattack by 5. So now you've got 35% chance. I think they just want to push you away from the counter set, right? And just have you run her probably just on injury set, right? That's probably what the ultimate goal is. Run her on injury set um, and do the same thing that Belion does at a discount. Granted, she can do it as well as Belion again. Probably not. But, I mean, it's hard to argue with a discount Belion, really. 
Uh, and then the last one dispels one debuff from all allies again. So they just threw that into her as they just threw that in here, which is pretty cool. Um, so what is her actual one? Now she gets two. Um, I think I'm probably not gonna run this one. I might run this one, but I have to look at what other her other equipment are. Um, yeah, so I think watch out for Armin. We're probably gonna see her a lot more. She's gonna be a lot more irritating. Um, Kali, I mean, probably not. Uh, Guider Aether, probably not, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't really think we'll see much of him. Um, Destina, probably just because a lot of people don't, like I said, a lot of people don't have made Chloe, and having an AoE revive is like no joke. Um, so we're probably going to see her a lot. Again, there's a lot of extinction running around, but that doesn't mean that an AoE revive is now useless, right? So, you know, to keep that in mind. Um, Ludwig, we're probably going to see people try to use Ludwig, but Ludwig is going to suffer from the same problems he always has in, in the sense that, for one, he's not a waifu, so no one cares enough to invest in him. Uh, and for two, he needs a lot of speed and a lot of damage, and that's kind of hard to, like, manifest. Um, and then lastly, or not lastly, but, like, Araminta is going to be way more fun. I think we're going to see a lot of Araminta just because people have a lot of, like, um, what's her name? A lot of researcher carrot gear they're gonna drop onto Araminta and then try her out and then realize she's a lot of fun and then stick with Araminta. Now granted some of that gear was moved over to uh, Hua Yung and there's nothing wrong with that but like you know there's still some leftover stuff so that's probably where we're gonna see a lot of her early on. Uh, and then lastly oh not lastly I forgot that Dark Corvus was here. This is how bad this thing was like nobody cares like this nobody cares um, e extinction nobody cares like it, nobody cares like all this uh, who cares. Uh, he, it didn't help him. It didn't fix any of his problems. Like he, Corvus was not losing to revive. Is that's the point I want to make to you? Corvus was not losing to revive. That wasn't his like problem. His problem was just being slow and not being able to do anything. They gave him a one shot and then they nerfed everything else about him. And it was just like okay. Uh, but like I said, Corvus has been like not the worst unit. I mean, a lot of people say he's the worst ML unit, which it's like okay, I guess you could say that. I mean, I'm not sure. Like a guaranteed one shot is. <laughs> like you can say it's really that bad but you know some people don't really aren't satisfied with that so that, that is what it is um again now we got finally uh silver blade araminta silver blade araminta got the same treatment that corvus do, did uh they just kind of gave her stuff for no reason um it's not gonna it doesn't fix any of her problems right she's still forced to come with a stripper and if she doesn't she's kind of screwed and like basically we're in a meta where there's too many other other options to bring along with your strippers, right? Not only that, but like two, you have to take up, you have to take two strippers with you, which already takes up a lot of your slots, right? Two strippers with silver blade, that's three units of debuffing, and that basically lets them run, like do whatever what they want. They can bring free reign on like, uh, what's his name, like Champion Zerato, like all the anti debuffers, like you just push them all through at that point. They bring in one extra unit that's not a debuffer, and you don't really care about what that is, and you just ban it with the other one that's not a debuffer, right? Um, so right now, like the the whole like debuff meta is too is too fragile to run more than two every time. Now a lot of people are going to, and that's only because they you bait them like they bait you or they, they realize how your draft is rolling. But if you let someone pick three debuffers into you and you can't and you don't punish them, that's mainly your fault rather than like how the meta is right now. Dedicating yourself to, to more than two is kind of leaves you wide open because again, like I said, if you bring three. You pick two extra, two people that aren't uh, debuff related, like damagers or something like that. And then they just bring Champion Zerato or like, um, you know, now suddenly, uh, what's her name? Um, I forget her name. Dilibet is just overpowered now against that comp. Uh, you know, just like all, there's like so many things that'll punish you for having all those debuffs. Uh, so people like in drafts, if, for those of you who play RTA, in drafts, no one's running pure debuffs, right? They're running like two debuffers at most with a lot of damage so that they can capitalize on the debuffs and all that stuff, right? So like you can't run Champion Zerato because they're just going to bring in Arby and then Arby's going to like double tap him. He's going to die, right? So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, so like I said, they didn't really fix very much with Silverblade Araminta. I think she's, I mean, she's, she's like, they gave her more stuff. That's it. They just put more stuff into her, um, which is fine. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's other than that. I think this is pretty decent. Um, I'm glad to see so many units buffed. That's the main the main takeaway from this. They said they were gonna like work on more, and I feel like this is more than like the other ones. Not like a hundred percent more, like a bunch more, but like 
certainly seems like more. Um, again, we still just got two two ML units and a bunch of other ones, but uh, the ones that we that we are getting are like like Deanne is getting a small. I forgot about Deanne too. She was in there. She was snuck in there somewhere. But uh, yeah, her two debuff thing is like okay, quality of life probably should have been two since the beginning, but whatever. Uh, Armenta is going to be more fun. Ludwig is going to be more fun for whoever wants to use Ludwig, which you know includes nobody. Destina, there you go. You know, uh, a working man's um, made Chloe. Gutter Ether, eh. Coley, eh. And Armin is another uh, working man's Bellion. Um, maybe. If if people find out that the injury set is good on her. Um, there's a good chance that it won't be that good on her. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, that's it for that's it for today. Um, hopefully you guys all take something away from this. Um, like I said, you guys can already tell which ones I'm going to build um, based off of this. And it's just going to be... It's actually just going to be two. It's going to be Araminta and Armin. Um, Armin, I'm going to dump a lot of gear into Armin and see where what how that gets me. Um, because that looks like a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, we'll see where that goes. Um, these don't come out for another two weeks, so we'll be fine. 